One of the questions I always ask myself during Novak Djokovic's dominance on the ATP Tour is when will father time kick in? When will his results start to decline? And it's happening this year. Djokovic's results are not the same that were in previous years. Of course, he set an unbelievably high standard for himself. Last year, I'm sure you guys know, he won three Grand Slams, won the World Tour Finals. He is still ranked number one in the world because of those results. This year, even though this might be one of his, if not the worst year of his career so far, he still reached the semis of the Australian Open and the semis of Monte Carlo, which are great results, but for Novak Djokovic standards, these are subpar results. But also on top of that, there's been some uncharacteristic losses in Indian Wells to Nardi and now in Rome to Tabillo. And I gotta be honest with you, there's something weird about Novak this year. The loss yesterday was shocking. And not because he necessarily lost to Tabillo, who is a phenomenal player, unbelievable serve, unbelievable forehand. Another great player from Chile, which is a really strong tennis nations. Guys like Rios, Masu, Gonzalez are now replaced by three incredible players, Jerry, Garin, and Tabillo. So it wasn't for the fact that Novak Djokovic lost to Tabillo, but how he behaved on the court. And let me take you through the match. And I watched the whole thing and I couldn't believe my eyes because it's been many, many years since I've seen Djokovic play like this. The one match that compares to this one was his loss to Sonego in Vienna, where he lost two and one. This performance against Tabillo was so poor that Novak Djokovic got booed off the court, which is super disrespectful and something that don't approve of. But there is a reason why he was booed. And there was a very strange behavior on the court. So the match started with Novak Djokovic serving and he goes down low 40 right away. He saves two break points and then on 30-40, there's a long rally and Novak Djokovic attempts a drop shot from way behind the baseline, which he spectacularly makes. But I thought this is a low percentage risky play from Novak down break point. I didn't perceive this as a positive point. He then loses his serve and proceeds to play strange tennis, attempting a tremendous amount of drop shots from very bad positions on the court. He doesn't appear to have control on his ground strokes. He's making mistakes and missing by a lot, especially with his forehand. The thing that made absolutely no sense was the fact that he was ripping second serves and he committed a lot of double faults. For example, after losing the first set 6-2, in the first game of the second set, it's 30 all. Djokovic hits two wild second serves in a row, double faults, and gets broken. Even match point down, he's got a second serve and instead of kicking it in, he rips it long. So I get why people were booing because it looked like Djokovic didn't want to be on the court and it almost looked like a tank. But I examined this match very closely and to me, it wasn't a tank. Djokovic did try because in that second set after getting broken, he did try to break back. There was one game where it was down 2-1 where he had 15-30 and he made a positive body language with his racket going like this. So Djokovic was trying to break back, but when he was serving to keep the match one break down, he was playing so careless in those service games. In fact, he wasn't taking any time between points. He was rushing. He wasn't even bouncing the ball like he normally does. This was a shocking performance from Djokovic, mentally speaking. And he is quite lucky that he got three games in that second set. He could have easily lost that second set uh, 6-1. So there's something going on with Novak. I can't explain it. To me, it's also weird that he pulled out of Miami and Madrid. So it's quite possible that there's a lack of motivation. And I have to talk about the water bottle incident, which a lot of people are making fun of and they shouldn't because it's not fun to get hit by a metal water bottle from pretty high up. And according to Novak, he was in pretty bad shape afterwards. He said he felt fine the next day, but in the match, Djokovic said that something was off. He didn't have any balance, any rhythm, and there could be some possible relationship to the water bottle incident. He said he didn't know whether this had an effect on him or not, and that he was gonna get further checks. So it could be that the water bottle incident 
had something to do with his performance, but we have to take the entire year into consideration, which hasn't been great for Novak. And now he's going into the French Open with the worst preparation ever. I'm not sure why, but there is no tournament in Serbia this year. Usually there is a Belgrade Open tournament. There was actually one year where they had two tournaments, two 250s in Serbia. Last year it was in Banja Luka. So this is it for Novak Djokovic. There's one semifinal in Monte Carlo where he lost to Kasper Ruud and a third round exit in Rome. And what this means is the following. With Rafa being the shadow of his former self, with Sinner out with an injury, with Alcaraz injured, this is the most open draw that we've seen at the French Open in many, many years. And here are the guys that we're going to have to consider is the guys that have been doing well during the clay court swing. Tsitsipas has been playing well. He won Monte Carlo, was in the final of Barcelona. Also Rude, you can flip those two results. Rublev won Madrid. He is also another guy to consider. We don't know who is going to prevail in Rome. But one more thing that I want to talk about and something that I've talked about in the past is the bashing of the champions on social media, which is ridiculous because while I am a huge Rafa fan and I was cheering hardcore for Rafa anytime that he played Novak, I have the ultimate respect for Novak and I like watching Novak play and I don't wish anything bad upon him. But it's crazy to me that both the Rafa fans and the Novak fans, and there's probably some toxic Federer fans in there too, that are so happy anytime Djokovic loses and vice versa. The Djokovic fans are happy when Nadal loses. Of course, these are the toxic ones, but there are many of them. If you go on social media, you don't even want to open the comments because they're so ridiculous. But I want to just say one thing to all the haters of Rafa and of Djokovic because these guys have been written off, okay? Only at the end of 2023, Djokovic was on top of the tennis world. In 2022, Nadal was on the top of the tennis world. And now it seems like these guys are too old, too slow. The young guys are too good for them. And they have absolutely no chance to win a single tournament in the future. And this is so ridiculous. And you can't ever count out champions. And I'm going to name you some examples that are even more extreme than Novak's case of champions who have made glorious comebacks. Do you remember in 1991 when Jimmy Connors at the age of 39 made the semifinals at the US Open? Nobody expected him to do that. He was completely written off. Do you remember when Pete Sampras won the US Open? He was completely written off. That year he lost in the second round of Wimbledon to George Bostel. Didn't play well in the warm-up tournaments to the US Open and ended up winning the US Open. And let's not forget Goran Ivanishevich who needed a wild card to get into Wimbledon. Nobody expected Ivanishevich to do anything that particular year and Goran ends up winning Wimbledon. So one thing that you have to understand is that these guys are champions. Something can click for them and they can turn it on and deliver a spectacular performance at the most important tournaments. And this is definitely a possibility at this year's French Open. Now I want to finish this Monday morning rant with something that I've been asked about so much this week. And it's the grunting in tennis and more specifically the WTA Tour. And I'm not going to name any players and call them out, but you probably know who I'm talking about. And I'm going to tell you that there are grunts that are intuitive. In other words, players will exhale when they hit their strokes and sounds will come out of them. Sometimes these sounds can be louder. This can also have to do with the amount of pressure that they're feeling, the intensity that they're playing with, or Maybe if they're exhausted, sometimes the grunts get louder. The reason why I know that these players are grunting intuitively because I play tennis and I have to grunt and I'm completely unaware that I do so. And in fact, if you listen to the sound that a player makes on the serve, I made a video in the past and made the example of Djokovic's sound on the serve that I thought sounded very similar to mine. <laughs> There's absolutely no way that you could recreate this sound. So it is 100% factual that the sound that's coming out of Djokovic on the serve, it is 100% an intuitive grunt. However, and I'm slamming the table because I'm serious about this, 
there are absolutely players with fake grunts, okay? And what I was doing last week, uh, I was watching a few players on the WTA Tour, and I was listening to the length of the grunt. And in some instances, the grunt was so prolonged that the ball actually bounced on the other side of the court. So the grunt continued when the ball went past the net and bounced on the other side. Now, I think if the grunt is long enough where it goes into the opponent's stroke, you can consider that hindrance. I'm not 100% sure on the rule, but I am 100% against fake grunts. I didn't like it when players would grunt like that when they played against me, and I don't like players to do it on the professional tour. And it is true that it could influence the opponent in a negative way when the grunt is fake, when it's prolonged. And it is also true that it's something that's very annoying to listen to. Ah! 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 Ah!